Hey guys, uh, Troy Redstone here, author of 401k Architecture. Um, I'm super excited. I know I probably get geeked out about this kind of stuff, but I'm super excited about the new copy that we just got of the Guide to Retirement. I hope that you're using this tool. Uh, it's from our partners over at J.P. Morgan Chase. There's a ton of research that goes into this. Lots of really, really great numbers. You should be using the Guide to Retirement. And, and here's why. Your plan design should not be based on guesswork. Uh, you, you should actually know kind of what the industry does and responds to various things. And so, so you need to be familiar with that research. If you're in our industry, if you're in the retirement plan industry, hopefully you're familiar with the guide to retirement. If you're an employer that sponsors a workplace retirement plan, hopefully you're working with an advisor or a consultant who uses the guide to retirement. It's a really, really helpful tool. There was so much really helpful information in this last edition. And I pulled a couple of things out just to kind of share with some of our clients. And then I got to thinking, you might enjoy seeing some of this as well. So I thought I'd go ahead and put together a couple of slides and share this with you guys. This is from the Guide to Retirement, specifically the section that talks about the benefit of saving and investing early. You've heard me say this before. It's based on a study or, or some research that, that JP Morgan did um, of someone just having $200 saved a month. So $200 saved a month is just $2,400 a year. Now, I went back and I looked at it and I read the fine print and it doesn't actually say it has to be $200 out of your pocket. So it just says $200 saved monthly. It could be $200 saved between what you put in and what the employer matches if you're in a 401k. That's really cool. Uh, and it's also based upon a portfolio return, a portfolio return of 7%. Now, if you're not really familiar with how the market works, you might think 7%. Maybe that sounds like a lot. Maybe it doesn't sound like a lot. I don't know. But uh, it's actually a very, very achievable rate of return. The the, the S&P 500, which is the general stock index, right, over the last 10 years had a return of more than 12%. Um, the S&P over the last 20 years, going all the way back to 2002, had a return of over 8%. And the historic rate of return in the S&P 500 is almost 12% since it started in 1957. So when they say they base this illustration, and this is just an illustration, they're not they're not giving investment advice. I'm not giving investment advice. I'm not telling you to put all your money in the S&P 500. We're just saying that the S&P, since its inception, had a return of almost 12%. So this is based on a portfolio of returning 7% annualized over time. So um, $200 a month, $2,400 a year. Obviously, if you did that for 10 years, you'd have 24,000. Three years, you'd have seventy-two thousand, and four years, four decades, you'd have ninety-six thousand dollars. So, so we're going to look at what what the illustration that J.P. Morgan put together in the Guide to Retirement, and they're using a couple different names, a couple of different illustrations. That it's obviously just an illustration; it's a fictitious thing, but the numbers, the research is real. So, we're going to look at a person named Quincy who only saved twenty-four thousand. Lila saved seventy-two thousand, and Noah saved ninety-six thousand. Now, one thing that you know, if you've heard me talk about this at all, you've seen these, these videos before, how much you save is really, really key. Um, imagine you had a really fancy sports car in the driveway. How fast or how far do you think that sucker's going to go if you don't put any gas in the tank? <laughs> so how much you put in your plan is really, really important. So you might assume, we might assume that if Noah put in the most, Noah has more than anybody else. And if, if Quincy only put in 24000 there's no way Quincy's going to have as much as everybody else. Again, you know, it's the same 7% rate of return, right? So it's also important, though, when you start, and it's really important, like where, how you're investing along the way. Okay. So let's look at the illustration that JP Morgan put together. The first person, as I mentioned, is Quincy. Quincy puts away $2,400 a year for 10 years between the ages of 25 and 35. It ends up being $24,000. And, and then he stops putting money in when he's 35. Um, but it continues in the market working at the same exact 7% rate of return as everybody else in here, right? And, and over the next three decades, it ends up being valued at $270,000. That's pretty awesome. And that's the story. That's the, that's the, that's the idea of compounding returns. So his 24,000 made 7% and his 24,000 and the 7% made 7% and so on and so on. So the compounding effect over time really, really worked to his advantage. Well, along comes somebody named Lila, and Lila's like, I could do what Quincy did. So she starts putting away $2,400 a year, just $200 a month, right? And that could be between her money and the match money. 
it's $72,000. Now, she put away three times as much as Quincy. You might assume she has three times as much of retirement, but she actually ends up with less. How does she end up with less than Quincy does at retirement? The obvious answer is because she started later, but, but you got to ask yourself, does even 10 years make that much of a difference? I mean, just starting 10 years later is not that big of a deal, right? It really is. Starting 10 years later can be a really, really expensive mistake. And waiting too long is really, really hard, right? And then along comes Noah. Now, Noah's saving the same 2400 year, um, 2400 a year that everybody else has, $200 a month. Um, but I want to point this out to you. You might have glossed over this. It says Quincy invest 24000 Lila invest 72000 Noah saves 96000 Noah is nervous. So Noah puts his money into a very conservative account at a very simple, like 2% rate of return. And at retirement, after 40 years of investing, he only has $158,000 to show for it. So that can be a really, really expensive mistake that a lot of people, especially younger people make, if they're nervous about the market, they're thinking, I'm going to stay out of this. I'm going to stay on the sideline. And I, I, I encourage you not to make that mistake of being too conservative with your portfolio. Now we have another person, Chloe. Chloe does $2,400 a year. She's investing $96,000, just like Noah is. She's investing in that same 7% rate of return, just like uh, Quincy, just like Lila, Lila. But for only that 7% rate of return, she ends up having almost twice as much as Quincy when she gets to the finish line. So we can look at this and draw some assumptions, but they're probably not the assumptions that we thought we were going to have. We thought Noah would have the most because he was saving the most but Noah was nervous. So being too conservative can be really, really expensive. Uh, Lila was late. You might think, hey, I'm gonna try to eliminate some other stuff, um, uh, maybe invest in my home first or whatever, and I'll take, I'll take retirement more seriously later. If you're late to the game, you could end up doing like three times as much and still not get caught up with where you would have been if you'd been on time. Now, Quincy started early, but Quincy quit. Quincy started early and didn't save nearly as much as Lila or, or Noah and has put more than both of them. So for only 24,000, he has a lot more to show uh, because he started early. That's really the key to the point. That's, that's really the key to what we're talking about here. But Quincy quit, right? So Chloe didn't quit. Chloe consistently ran the marathon. And I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to run the marathon if you're an employer, you need to have this guide to retirement so that you can have this information. It's on page 22 in the guide to retirement. I want to make sure that you, ha you have this information so that your plan is successful for your employees. So do you have any questions at all? Ask the fee-only 401k advisors. I would love to help you with this. I'd love to get a copy for you of the guide to retirement if that's something that would be useful for you as you consider plan design, okay? I want every one of you to run the race well and to finish well and to make it to the finish line. Stay in the race.